special occasion and based on the excitement and chit chat in the room I'm gathering you're as excited to be here as we are. My, Adam and I met over 10 years ago now and I can clearly remember the first conversation we ever had and I walked away just going wow that guy has way more than his fair share of brains, charisma and biceps. <laughs> Adam is one of those high achievers. You know those people who just happen to be annoyingly good at everything they touch? Whether it was surf life saving or tennis, he's just got that Midas touch. And it's that success mindset that I think he really uses in everything in life and work today. He didn't know I was going to bring this up, so I'm going to share a secret. But Adam was such a good tennis player that he was actually in line to give Pat Rafter a run for his money. So just think about that. Adam Fraser could be the face of Bond's <laughs> <laughs> I know that over the 10 odd years that I've known Adam, he continues to raise the standard nationally of research, of speaking, and of adult entertainment. No, 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 not that time. <laughs> where adult learning meets maximum engagement and what that does is deliver huge results. So Adam's been working with a number of universities all around the world to really create that knowledge bank around performance and well-being. Adam has a superpower of taking complex and really distilling it into a simple idea that's easy to implement. So on that note, are we ready to hear from the non-bonds face, man of the moment, Dr. Adam Fraser, about the future of learning? Yes. Um, now, thank you all for coming along, and like seriously, there's some people in the room I haven't seen for ages, like Chloe, who just walked in. Uh, so, like seriously, this is so much fun, and, and as you said, like we can only fit so many people in this space, and, and we went through the list of who do we want in the room, and uh, this is who we picked. Um, but for the last six years, uh, what's been happening is myself and Deakin University have been studying how organisations evolve to stay relevant, to stay commercial successful and also within that we've also been looking at how does how does research and the way we educate ourselves in business changed and what we found is it's gone through an evolution and it started much more around we want motivation and inspiration like we want to be inspired and motivated and then what happened is it evolved into well, actually we want a technical expert we want skills, we want strategies, and the rise of the TED Talk shows how popular that has been. But what we're seeing is uh, recently two more evolutions. So one is that organizations have gone from, we just don't want the technical expert, we want some research. Because we want to know that this isn't just your opinion, we want to know that there's some solid stuff behind this. However, the last evolution we've seen in the last couple of years is organizations have said, we just don't want research, we want research on us. We are unique, we are different, we have nuances, and what we want to know is that the stuff you give us is going to suit our context. And that is the evolution we've seen. So we've gone away from inspire me, to educate me, to give me research, to give me research on us. And this is what the eLab's all about. Now, the, all the research that we do sits at this level. So what the eLab is, is a partnership between Dr. Adam Fraser Consulting, and Deakin Business School. And what we do is we do good quality science to look at how do we help organizations evolve and stay relevant. But this model is that we identify projects with organizations that are going to add value. And some people that are using the eLab services are in this room today. So we identify a project. And then what we do is partner with the university to design the study. And then, we get them to do the study. Now, the reason we help design it is that too often universities get lost in their world of academia and forget that there's actually an outcome we're trying to get here. So we keep them on track, but we don't do the research, we let them do it, so that we don't bias the results. Then what happens is the findings are published in scientific journals, and we also give the organisation a summary and recommendations and all those sorts of things. And the last step is if we have the skills to address the issues that come out of the research, we will. If not, we actually refer other people on to do the work. 
This is what our business is all about, is how do we use good science to evolve business? How do we use good science to get better commercial outcomes? I would like to personally thank all of you. First of all, thank you for the early start this morning, but I mean, really, where else would you rather be? We're kind of pretending that we're at a cocktail party, but <laughs> sipping on yogurt instead of champagne. Um, and you get to hear from a fantastic speaker this morning. But I also want to thank you for who you are to Adam. So you guys are the ones that he handpicked to be here today because you're the people he's excited to share his new projects with first. So thank you so much for being here.